Us. This one's from my master Kenneth from all over. Most of you watching probably know what's drawers. It's South African dried sausage made bra. Today we're making all kinds of drawers. So get comfy and get a drink, if you're allowed to. Different ways, different meats. Including the one they said can't be done. Pork. I say tsekete. Who the f said you can't make drawers from pork? Half the world makes pork charcuterie. The only reason they f up pork drawers is because they don't know how to make it. <laughs> anyway, this is how it's done. Let me introduce you to the contenders. First off, we have beef followed by venison, and finally, Pippa Pig. You want to wear gloves for this one, otherwise, just keep your hands spotlessly clean throughout the process. For the beef, I use rump, brisket, and beef fat. We want to aim for about 20% fat, keeping it juicy loosey. We need casings to stuff our meat into. These are natural sheep's casings, 22 to 24 caliber. You can use collagen casings too. Obviously, won't make it vegan or fix your arthritis, but it's usable. These came packed in salt and need to be rinsed well under cold running water. Coriander is our best friend, again, and needs roasting. Black pepper, you want to freshly grind this yourself as the flavor is much brighter. Cloves, because I said so and also because it's necessary. Vinegar, use malt, apple cider, whatever. This is red wine vinegar. Worcestershire sauce, just to hear you and the shop assistant pronouncing it. And also because it's tasty. A bit of red wine, optional but kind of necessary, and by using it you move from the kiddies drawers to big boy drawers. Brandy, also optional but very necessary, especially recommended, and you now have a legitimate excuse to pop a cork or have a wee dram. But be careful, she is always watching you. Thanks, mother. Finally, we need salt. We'll get to curing salt in a bit. For venison, we use venison rump and beef fat, fresh garlic, juniper berries, fresh rosemary. Got to be fresh, otherwise your drawers will taste like Jamie's pasta sauce. Cuck! You want to rip it off the stalks and bruise it. Best smell on three fingers since time began. Pork neck? It's the wood next, as well as smoked bacon. The sins are piling up. No extra fat because it's perfect the way it is. What's that nowadays, like size 16, 18 something? I don't know. Anyway, for pig, we use pipa's intestines in the form of hog casings. These are a touch thicker. Pippa loves sage, so we give it to her, cause we're romantic and tasteful. Smoked paprika is a must. Kinda making chorizo drawers here, and you definitely want to use it. Curing salt, it's a must if you're making this, so the pork fat does not oxidize. Not gonna get into this, but the science exists. Get mini scales so you measure correctly. Because drawers is a minced meat product, it's my duty to tell you that it's safer to use curing salt or sodium nitrite when making any kind of cured sausage. It stops botulism from producing harmful toxins. It's rare as fuck, but still, I did tell you. I make mine traditionally without curing salt, but your life, your choice. Okay, so, we start by cutting the meat into small cubes that'll mince easily. The same goes for the fat. And to be honest, the fat should be a touch smaller. Once the meat is cut, you want to pop it into the freezer for a bit so that it's super cold. Almost frozen. It prevents the meat from becoming a pate. While that's chilling, rinse and soak your casings very well in cold running water. We start with the spices and wet mix for classic beef drawers. Grab a skillet or pan and dry roast your spices until nice and fragrant. Do them separately as they take different times to roast. Once cooled, blend the coriander but not totally smooth. Next, blend the cloves and black pepper together until fine. Add it to the coriander. Next, you add the Worcestershire sauce, vinegar, red wine and brandy. If you want, you could also add the salt now. Next, let's make the venison cure. Grate fresh garlic to a paste, then chop the rosemary extremely finely. For this, we do all the spices together. Black pepper, juniper berries and roasted coriander. Give it a good blend until all the spices are evenly ground. Add together the garlic, rosemary, spices, vinegar and wine. Finally, the pig's treatment, sage gets chopped up finely. It also has antioxidation properties, so helps to keep the fat from turning rancid. Pork fat oxidizes quicker than beef fat, which is why we need to treat it differently. Garlic gets minced or grated into a paste. Add the all-important smoked paprika. Wet stuff goes in and stir. Grab the meat from the freezer and add the salt followed by the wet cure. 
I add the salt separately to be sure I added it. Getting old here and if you leave the salt out, you f***ed it up. You could also mince the meat first, then add the cure after. Up to you, same same, whichever way you choose, make sure you mix your marinade and meat thoroughly, so everything is coated nicely. Once done, cover it and let it sit in the fridge for about 2 hours. To mince it, we use a coarse grinding plate. We only grind it once. One golden rule is to make sure your equipment is spotlessly clean and ice cold. Well, at least the mincer attachment. Depending on the amount you make, work in small batches to make sure the meat stays chilled. It will help to avoid death by deadly bacteria, especially if you refuse to use curing salt. So, do it if you love life. The meat should have a coarse, grainy structure once minced. When all is done and dusted, cover and go into the fridge once again with the meat. Can't stress how important temperature control and hygiene is when fiddling with sausages. So make sure you work clean, cold and fast. We're getting close to stuffing this, so next you want to feed your casings onto a nozzle. Not your nozzle, the nozzle that comes with your mincer or sausage attachment. This is a pain in the ass, but it helps to keep it moist all the time if you know what I mean. If you're rich, you use sausage stuffer. I'll link one down in the description. If you're poor like me, you have a contraption like this to assemble, also linked down in the description. We don't need the blade or the grinding plate again. Also, don't sip too much. Grinders and fingers and booze don't have a bright future together. Make sure you leave a bit of overhang when loading the casings. You need it to tie off the sausages later. Okay, on it goes and let's stuff this. Important not to over or under stuff the casings. It takes some practice, so take it easy. Sometimes your casings might break, and that's okay too. Just tie it off and continue. Keep loading new casings and stuffing them until your mince is used up. If your sausages are thicker or thinner in parts, even them out carefully, taking care not to break the casings. Pop any air bubbles with a toothpick or your mum's sewing needle. If you're feeling fancy, make a little string of Drobo's beads and do what you do with a string of beads. For pork, your life will be easier as the casings are bigger. Some casings have a little bit of web stuck to it. Just remove it once the sausages are stuffed. Venison gets the same loving treatment as beef. Finally ready to hang it. The classic option is cheap wooden dowels covered in plastic wrap. Stainless steel or plastic hooks also work. Some of you only have the possibility of a dehydrator and that's okay too. If you hang it, line the sausages up and make sure they are equally bent in half. The bend is just a little pinch, careful not to break it. In a dehydrator, it does not matter that much as it's lying down. I recommend weighing these if it's the first time you do this. Use a cable tie or whatever else. Weigh it and label it with a starting weight. We will aim for about 40% weight loss. About as much as I should aim for. Hang them either way you want, on hooks or sticks. Both gets a golden star. For the dehydrator, set it to the lowest setting, which is 30 to 40 degrees Celsius or 86 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit usually. I dry mine in a fridge with simple add-ons to make it a curing chamber. I run a small fan with the heat on zero continuously. Next to it we have a small space heater, connected to a thermostat controller. Plug both your fridge and heater into your thermostat, heating for heating, fridge for cooling. Set it to 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit, link to mine in the description. Check your drawers daily to make sure they are drying evenly. If they touch in the middle, just move them a bit. After two days, your dehydrator wars might be ready. Check it by weighing it or gently squeezing to judge the weight loss. If it snaps and it doesn't look too wet inside, you're ready to start eating. The curing chamber drawers takes about 7 to 10 days. As with Biltong, people like it dry to different levels. Some like it wet, some like it dry. You choose what's best for you. Your life, your time, your mouth hole. All of them are bafok, but my favorite, classic of course, and there's no surprise, chorizo style pork drawers is something special. Make it and go take a vacation in Flavor Bay. was easy wasn't it? Mince it, mix it, dry it, eat it. Let's hear your comments down below. I'm especially looking forward to the cuck comments coming from Drobor's junkies. Go ahead with questions but most importantly thank you very much for watching. Be a lekker massa kunt, leave a like, subscribe, turn on the ding dong and I will see you next time. Awe, chai la tijd, tot de dag, my brana bye bye.